So Valentine's Day is right around the corner. So here's a fun little project that you could add to your big bag of romance. This is a wine bottle and wine glass holder. The holder fits over the neck of the bottle and two wine glasses balance on each end. And in order to add a little bit of personalization to it, we also have room for initials. I put my initials along with my wife's initials. Now if you'd like to learn how to design this project in Inkscape, check out my previous video and I go through all the steps on how to design this. And I'll put a link to that in the description below. But in this video, we're actually going to build this project just in time for Valentine's Day. So let's get started. So with my printed pattern, I'm going to just roughly cut this thing out. Once I have it cut out, I'm going to apply it to a piece of 3 quarter inch cherry. And I think something like this will actually look really nice. I'm going to use spray adhesive to attach the pattern to the wood. I'm going to just spray the back of the pattern and I'm going to let it dry for a few moments until it becomes tacky. Once it's tacky, I'm going to just go ahead and apply it directly to the wood and give it a good press. So at the drill press, I'm going to drill a few pilot holes so I can feed the blade through. One here at the neck of the bottle and then of course on off each one of the monograms. So we're at the scroll saw now and we're going to feed the blade through the pilot hole we just drilled. And I'm using a number three scroll reverse, but I think a number five would work really well in this situation as well. I'm using the scroll saw to cut out the circle, but if you have a large portion or bit or a hole saw, I think that would work as well. But it works just as easy just to do it with the scroll saw, and that's the way I chose. Now we move on to each one of the initials, and for a lot of these initials, they kind of have sharp corners, and I really took my time in order to get those nice and sharp. Now this project is being cut out of three quarter inch cherry, and cherry is notorious for burning. Uh, so if I had to do it all over again, I probably should have added a layer of packing tape on top of this pattern. And that packing tape will act as a blade lubricant and coolant, and it will kind of reduce the chance of burning the cherry. It won't completely eliminate it, but it will certainly reduce it and save yourself a little bit of work later on. So now it's time to cut the perimeter. Now I chose to add a pilot hole at the end of the uh, blank here instead of cutting in directly from the side. And having this pilot hole and kind of keeping everything together, what that does is it gives a little bit more stability to the project that you're cutting. Uh, if you cut in from the side, uh, once you kind of get a long piece, uh, what it's going to do is going to cause a lot of vibration and uh, kind of, um, it just makes it a little bit more difficult to work with. So we finish up the edge here and work on the inside of this little glass holder and there we go. And there's our finished cutting. So it's time to remove the pattern and I spritz it down with some mineral spirits and after a few moments the pattern practically falls off on its own. So these are the burn marks that was left by the blade onto the cherry. If I was smart, I should have probably laid down some packing tape uh, as a little bit of a blade lubricant. But now I have to pay the price and remove the burns on my own. And I'm going to do that at my oscillating spindle sander, which makes quick work of that. So on my makeshift router table, I'm using a roundover bit to kind of soften up all the edges. On the outside edge, I'm just being a little bit extra careful around these end heart areas so that there's no blowout. So for the neck of the bottle, I'm using a chamfer bit so that it fits on the neck a little bit easier. So now it's time to do a little bit of sanding. I'm going to sand both the front and the back and kind of smooth out some of the edges a little bit. And I'm just taking this down to about 120.
Now it's time for a little bit of hand sanding to get to the areas that the other machines can't get to. And I'm mostly rounding off some of these corners and then removing a few burn marks. At the drill press I have a star sander hooked up and I really like this tool. It's a really great tool for softening up some of the edges and uh, I, I think I have about a 220 grit in here and boy it does a really nice job of softening up and smoothing out your projects. So for the finish I'm just going to use a clear acrylic spray. I'm using a satin spray in this particular one and I'll put about four coats on and then I'll buff it out with a 4 aught steel wool and then I'll give it one last coat and it gives it a nice silky smooth feel and I think it looks really nice. I hope you enjoyed this project, and if you like a copy of this pattern, I'll put a link to that in the description below. It will include all of the initials A through Z, so you can personalize it any which way you would like. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to hit that like button, that helps me out an awful lot. And if you're new to my channel, be sure to subscribe. I do these videos from time to time and I'd love to have you on board. You can find me hanging out over at Scrollsaw Village, you can also find me on Facebook, Pinterest, and Instagram, and I'll put links to all of that in the description below. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.